Welcome to Emergency Chaos, where we provide tips and tricks to make you a better ear nurse. Today we are reviewing epinephrine, including how to be safe, complications, going over when it's used, as well as going over what a dirty epi drip is, what push dose epi is, and how to make a drip. Thank you for watching. Epinephrine is a catecholamine that acts on adrenergic receptors, including alpha-1, beta-1, and beta-2, leading to an increase in blood pressure, heart contractility, and increases in heart rate, as well as bronchodilatory effects. It's a potent medication with several uses, so we as ER nurses must educate ourselves to keep our patients safe. Uses in the ER include cardiac arrest, shock, anaphylaxis, in breathing treatments, and in some types of wound care as well. In cardiac arrest, epinephrine is thought to help increase blood flow to the heart and brain. It's given per ACLS every 3-5 to five minutes, intravenous or IO. It's whey-based, but typically for adults, you give 1 mg followed by a saline flush to ensure it reaches central circulation. Just ensure to remember that it is weight-based, which is extremely important when caring for children. Again, in cardiac arrest, typically per ACLS given every 3-5 to five minutes via IV or IO. Now, let's get into talking about epi drips. Typically, the concentration for an epi drip is 1 mg in 250 ml or 4 mg in 250 ml of normal saline. As discussed, it's going to be used in times of shock when we need to increase the patient's blood pressure or even the heart rate. And with anaphylactic shock, it can also help open up the airway so patients can breathe better. And because it is such a potent medication, it will be weight-based, so ensure to review and follow your organization's protocols for starting doses, titrations, and limits. Again, because it is such a potent medication, it should ideally always be used on a pump where the rate can be closely controlled and monitored in order to help prevent complications that arise from a patient getting too much. Remember that safety is always key. Now, in the ER, there may be times where seconds really do count. The patient is literally crashing in front of you. You may not have the time to wait for an epi drip to be made. So a backup option that buys the, that buys the patient time while a formal drip is made is to make a dirty epi drip. Of course, you need to get a verbal order from your provider. Simply, you grab one milligram of epinephrine from your crash car and inject it into one liter of normal saline. Then you run this wide open. Again, the ideal is having a formal drip made by pharmacy and using it on a pump. But there are times when you don't have the time to wait for that medication to be made so you have to do something right there and then or your patient will crash and code a dirty epi drip is meant just to buy you a few minutes to get your patient situated then starting them on a formal drip and getting your patient situated with whatever they need again it's only meant to buy you a few minutes a few seconds to get your patient situated because the safe thing to do is to have a formal drip that was made by a pharmacy or a fellow ER nurse on a pump. But an epi drip, a dirty epi, will come in handy when your patient is crashing in front of you and you know they will code if you do nothing. Now, let's talk about push dose epi. And push dose epi is among the few things we do not push IV as ER nurses. It falls on the providers to push this medication. Although this is the case, I believe it is also beneficial for new ER nurses to be aware of it. Again, like with the dirty epi drip, it's used in emergencies where seconds count. Like if your patient is breaking down and down and the BP is tanking and they're per in peri-arrest, right? Typically, the providers will give 5 to 10 micrograms to help stabilize the patient. Again, that's micrograms. And it's made by grabbing 1 ml from an epi crash cart syringe that comes with one milligram of epi and 10 mLs, right? That's what they typically come in. It's one milligram of epi and 10 mLs. So you just want one mL from those 10 mLs. And this one mL will have 100 micrograms of epi. This one mL is mixed with nine mLs of normal saline in a flush. And this gives you a concentration of 100 micrograms and 10 mLs or 
10 micrograms in one ml. I know that's a little bit confusing. Just re-listen to that for a couple of times. It don't make sense. And then the providers are going to give 5 to 10 micrograms like we said. So it ends up being 0.5 to 1 ml out of time that they end up giving just for a push dose, epi dose of typically 5 to 10 micrograms. And then in anaphylaxis, an EpiPen is commonly used. An EpiPen delivers epinephrine into a muscle, which then gets absorbed and starts taking effect, which, as we discussed, has bronchodilatory effects and effects on blood pressure and heart rate. The dose for an adult EpiPen is 0.3 milligrams, while a children's EpiPen is 0.15 milligrams, which is half of the adult dose. So, Multiple doses of epinephrine, EpiPens, can be needed at times for patients in anaphylaxis. And they can get severe enough to where you need an epi drip. So it's important for you to monitor these patients to make sure they are getting better. And if they're not, that they can get multiple doses, right? So remember that the most common site for an EpiPen administration is the outer thigh and ensure to hold the pen in place for 10 seconds so all the medication goes in. Briefly, racemic epic is a type of epi used in breathing treatments for certain types of conditions to help decrease edema and strider. And then you're also going to see some providers use lidocaine with epinephrine when stitching lacerations as the epi helps the effects of lidocaine. The numbness lasts longer by constricting nearby, nearby blood vessels preventing the uptake of the lido but because of this reason it's avoided in fingers nose and ears as the vasoconstriction can lead to ischemia so as far as complications pressors specifically here epinephrine or the big guns of the medical world although they can save life lives if used incorrectly, they can also be deadly. Complications can range from tissue necrosis, if extravasation occurs, to even deadly arrhythmias. So please follow your preceptor's teachings and your hospitals and organizations, protocols and policies. Thank you for your time today. I hope that I was at least able to teach you one thing. If you want to keep learning, I've listed my favorite ER nursing related books in the description with my favorite being Sheehy's and the case files. As well, please take the time to watch my other videos. Also, if you would like to help support the channel, I have nursing stickers and shirts on Redbubble that you can check out again. Thank you for your time today. And as always, teamwork makes the dream work. And here at Emergency Chaos, we are proactive, not reactive.